right? So this is the expression. And uh, let's see if we can get it. So I have this circuit here that I've been building. Um, so I have an inductor in series with the resistor. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the capacitor. When I hook this up, um, so I want to be measuring current. So that means I want to be measuring voltage across the inductor. So let me hook this up this way across the uh, register through the inductor here. Some things have changed. I want you to ignore that for now. Um, a lot of things have difficulty driving uh, uh, inductive load properly. So I want you to ignore that for now. And um, uh, I'm going to try to measure the voltage across the register here. Uh, I don't really have to attach the ground. Um, uh, turn on channel B. Hmm. Something doesn't look quite right. It might be made of the frequency that it's at. OK, yeah, need to be faster. Mm, maybe a little bit faster. OK, only, only a little bit faster, not a lot faster. All right, uh, that's probably good enough. So just so that you can tell which is A and which is B, this is the A, that's our driving. Uh, uh, so once again, it's supposed to be square, but it's not square because the power supply is having trouble following the path that it's supposed to be following. But so I want you to focus on B. So I need A, so you know. So focus on this B. And the left edge of the screen is the time equals zero. That's where it triggers on the uh, rising edge. So that's where my applied voltage went from zero to a positive value. Um, and what you see here, does this, this, uh, yeah, this curve here, does it look like it'll be described by this? Yeah, it's the inverse of uh, the exponential decay, right? Yeah. Um, what's, the, what's this asymptotic value of current? What's this, uh, well, asymptotic value of final value of current? when you look at this expression? V over R, right? So voltage of the battery divided by the resistance of the register. Does that make sense? Like looking at this circuit, that if somebody told you that the maximum amount of the current that would flow is this voltage divided by this register, as though this inductor isn't there, does that make sense? Yes? Is this the, um, because of the inductor being ideal with no resistance in it? Or? Yeah, let's say, you know, even, so even though it does have register, it, in this case, it's actually close to ideal because the resistance of the inductor was 1.4 ohm. The register here is 100 ohm. So you could actually ignore this. So, uh, but I want you to focus on the property of the inductor itself, not the fact that it's ideal. Like, what about the inductor allows you to ignore it? Towards the end of this, uh, towards the end of this charging cycle, because that definitely wasn't the case with the capacitor. With the capacitor, you know, when it got fully charged up, it dropped the entire voltage of the battery, so that there was no more current flowing. But with the inductor, we are saying almost what sounds like the exact opposite thing. We are saying that when it's fully charged, we can kind of ignore the influence of the inductor altogether. Yes. Yeah, so you still focus on this, DIDT. So you look at the rate of change of current. And as Chris said, well, when you are done increasing current, it's, the rate of change is going to go to zero, which means change of voltage across the inductor is going to be zero. So all of the battery's voltage, now all of the battery's voltage now drops across the register. So that makes sense that this is the current that will be flowing when, once that happens. But yeah, the behavior of inductor is very curious. Um, it's uh, unintuitive. It takes a while to get used to. That's why this is the expression you should rely on. And I will say in this uh, maximum case, inductor is not actually doing nothing. It's actually stored energy. And um, so how inductor stored energy? Uh, that's the easiest to see in what we call LC circuit, inductor capacitor circuit. Um, 